Good afternoon. Please be seated, class of 2021. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you, especially the class of 2021, your parents and family, the faculty, all the friends who are here. Normally we have the Board of Trustees, but we didn't know how many uh, seats we were, we were going to be able to have, so they're not all here, though they're represented by Mr. Kroll. Um, it's great to see you all. Um, just one announcement before I give my welcome. Um, at the conclusion of the ceremony, the faculty is going to go over along to my left and form a tunnel, and the seniors will then walk and be sort of given high fives as everybody heads down to the concession area for a reception to which you're all invited. Um, in the unlikely event that we need an umbrella, because I think the weather is going to be okay, but it might, uh, uh, if you do put one up, just try to be careful not to block the person behind you. We don't want to have any incidents during the graduation. Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, who's worked so hard to put this together, Mr. Erlinson, the maintenance team. Uh, there's been a lot of planning and so much contingency, but it's just so wonderful to be here. Uh, it's, it's just a, an extra special blessing to be together. Uh, the other day when we had the rehearsal, um, we were out here with all the seniors, and um, for the first time we saw the faces of these people, uh, f the full faces, because we've seen them in masks, and it was, uh, it was kind of a revelation. And isn't that great that we're here without a mask? <clears throat> You know, with all the constraints that we've lived under, uh, it's, you know, to have an in-person graduation feels like a kind of poignant victory. So the class of 2021, you have a lot to be proud of and a lot of reasons to celebrate. Um, given Newark Academy's long history, um, events have affected past graduations from the Revolution and the Civil War to the 1918 pandemic and the Great Depression. Nonetheless, a version of this ceremony has taken place every year since the founding of this nation on five different campuses, all but one of which was in the city of Newark. Our school has educated the minds and helped shape the lives of thousands of young people, including most particularly those we are about to recognize. We come together to, today to celebrate the accomplishments of this extraordinary group of young men and women seated in front of me. Class of 2021, would you please stand? <laughs> On behalf of the faculty, I commend you for your work in the classroom, for your active engagement in school life, and for your remarkable goodwill this year as seniors. We're proud of you for all you have accomplished in the classroom, for the service, artistic expression, and athletic contributions that you've made, and for your leadership during this pandemic. We're confident that you are prepared to succeed in the colleges and universities you have selected. Your growth and your accomplishments while at the academy are indeed impressive, but I ask that you now acknowledge for a moment that many others have helped you along the way. Please take this time to turn to salute those to whom your product, without whom your productive time at Newark Academy would not have been possible. Your parents and family, please turn and recognize them. <laughs> Class of 2021, please now turn and recognize your faculty and staff behind me who have so generously offered their wisdom, their counsel, and their support. Please be seated. It's now my pleasure to invite Mr. Sam Kroll, the chairman of the board, to offer his welcome. Good afternoon. I bring you greetings and, more importantly, congratulations from the Board of Trustees. It seems as though it was not so long ago that I sat where you sit today. Well, it's been over 50 years. And if I reflect on my 17-year-old self, I suspect that I was not riveted by the, board, the words of the board chair at that time, so I'll be mercifully brief. If the intervening years have taught me anything, though, it's that life throws each one of us a curveball from time to time. 
And in your quiet moments, you'll be most proud, not of the ones that hung over the plate that you hit out of the park, but of how you handled the unexpected ones, the unanticipated ones. The class of 2021 knows something about curveballs. You've not just survived the pandemic, you've flourished. A cursory review of the colleges and universities that you're attending next year attests to that. But I suspect it goes a bit deeper. As you know, this campus has been essentially shut down to outsiders uh, for the past year. But I had the rare opportunity to come to campus not so long ago, and there was a sense of joy in the air. Granted, it was a sunny spring day, but it was palpable. Take that sense of joy with you. Be kind. Be an optimist. Even in the grip of the sort of tragedy that you've lived through this year, your enthusiasm, good nature, curiosity, ambition, and hope for the future brought you here. And I'm sure made even the scariest days of the fall and winter seem a little bit more normal. And one more thing, do not forget us. The further from the academy you get, the more you'll sense its significance in your lives. Even though 50 years stands between, you, between us, we shared a common experience. Newark Academy was a rare gift to me, not long ago, long ago actually. Uh, it, it's up to you to ensure that those who sit here in these chairs 50 years from now shame that, share that same gift. So I'll be watching. Now it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Gardy Guiteau, Director of Equity and Inclusion, to offer his welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Crawl. Good afternoon, everyone. What a blessing it is to be with you all today, together to celebrate on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, the class of 2021. Before I go any further, though, as is becoming customary, I find that it would be apropos um, to actually take a moment to acknowledge the first peoples of this land that we are sitting on, that we are standing on the Lenny Lenape tribe of New Jersey. Indeed, before they were forcibly moved from this land, um, they were the stewards of this land, who took care of it, and without whose work, we would not actually have the resources available um, for us to enjoy as a community. So I really wanted to take a moment to at least acknowledge that, because for that, we should all be grateful. Moments ago, you heard Mr. Austin um, actually invite you to please stand, turn around, acknowledge your families. And um, being Haitian American, I am always keenly aware of the fact that I migrated to this country with my family as a child. And I would not be here today, literally, were it not for the work sacrifices of my parents, but my grandparents as well, and indeed my great-grandparents by extension. All of that to say, my forebears allowed for me to be here with you all today. And I want to then take a moment to similarly appreciate and congratulate your families, those who are with you now and those maybe who aren't with us anymore, on whose shoulders I believe you are standing, on whose shoulders I believe you have been standing and whose sacrifices and work have allowed you to achieve the many, many heights that I've been able to actually witness you achieve over the course of your time as high school students at Newark Academy. Class of 2021, um, I really want to also take this moment to kind of share in your glory a little bit, if I may, because you were sophomores when I started working at Newark Academy back in 2018. And, um, and now you all are graduating. And since my personal life and fortune would have it that I will be joining my partner across the Atlantic um, for new personal professional opportunities, I am really thinking of myself as a member of the class of 21, 2021 as well. Think of it as though I transferred my sophomore year. As a class, we, have seen and done a lot over the course of the past three years. 
together we've been able to learn, and I've learned a lot from you all, and I find that the time that I've had at Newark Academy, I've been able to actually do well as the Director of Equity and Inclusion as a result of some of the ways that I've been able to connect with you all individually and as a class. That said, I'd like to think that it's been a successful three-year run, but not one without its bumps along the way, and uh, many of you know which bumps we might be able to speak to. Um, this past year especially, right, as Mr. Crawl mentioned, um, has been characterized by um, a lot of challenges that you all have actually taken on and flourished through. Um, and while many have called this the year of three pandemics, it's really, you know, been something of a major bump along the road that isn't just a bump, but can all, all almost be said to be something of a crater-sized hole. Um, and being someone who, again, I've driven in the streets of Haiti and driven in the streets of Philadelphia as well, um, thankfully I've been able to know how to negotiate and navigate um, some of those crater-sized um, potholes along the road. All jokes aside, your intellect, your thoughtfulness, your passion, your grace, your leadership have really been instrumental in helping not only your peers, but the institution as a whole uphold our community commitments to not only celebrate our diversity and our successes, but to actually engage in difficult work of conversing across difference and challenging each other to be better. Through your development of and participation in key educational opportunities over the course of the past um, years, this year especially, you've been really instrumental in moving all of us to acknowledge, and excuse me, I'm going to paraphrase a lawn sign that's become something of a popular fixture um, in recent years, and yes, I am going to paraphrase a lawn sign. In everything, we must create space for neurodiversity and diverse abilities, articulate that Black Lives Matter, recognize that women's rights are human rights, that viruses are not people, that hate neither anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or anti-Arab racism have any home in our midst, que no ser humano es ilegal, that we can understand gender as something that could also be fluid, that science is still real and important to develop great vaccines that allow us to sit together right now, and um, really that our diversity, not just our social diversity, but our diversity as individuals who bring great perspective and difference and ways of knowing and being, really are what make us amazing, greater, smarter, and better humans. So that being said, it's been really a pleasure serving you all these past few years. And um, I'll be watching from across the pond to see the amazing things that you all will be doing in your respective futures. Thank you all so much. With that said, it's my honor to welcome two of your classmates for some remarks. Good afternoon, I'm Molly Canton, a proud member of Newark Academy's class of 2021. So one of my favorite hobbies is looking through a train window. The feeling of movement while I'm still. The realization that every car, every lit window, every random passerby, human or not, is on their way somewhere. Although we may never get to cross paths again, there is an oddly calming feeling knowing that these stories will continue invisibly around me. So what initially sparked this habit was a story my grandmother shared with me a few years ago when I came home from school to see her practically shaking from disbelief. She explained that earlier that day, while waiting to check out in the grocery store line, 
she drew a miraculous connection with a complete stranger who would change her outlook on life forever. Now, let me take a second to back up and introduce you to the lovely lady sing, sitting among you in the crowd today. A dainty, five foot on a generous day, Chinese speaking woman, my grandmother almost never converses in public. Instead, she'll watch everything around her, absorbing her surroundings and all of its sounds like a classroom owl during a heated Socratic seminar. On this particular day, dissecting the mannerisms and speech of those around her, she noticed a woman that sounded familiar. The woman spoke my grandmother's native tongue. Intrigued, my grandmother approached the woman, making small talk about the produce. But in reality, she sought the answer to a simple question, where she was from. Bonding over their shared love of, of bean sprouts and apparently raw rutabagas, they soon realized the magnitude of their commonalities. Not only had they immigrated from the same country, province, town, and village, but they were descended from the same great-grandfather. Listening to this story for the first time, I was blown away. Coincidences happen all the time, but how could something so insignificant lead to something life-changing in a matter of minutes? How much had I missed by not striking up conversation with every random passerby in my life? As high school students, pretty much every part of our lives was structured in some way. We acclimated to a rigid school schedule, were disciplined into staying focused in back-to-back 50-minute -back classes and saving our ravenous teenage appetites until 10 minutes after fourth period, even though we may have failed in some cases. Our focus remained on the immediate future and what we could do to attain immediate success, instant gratification. We blazed forward incessantly, working tirelessly through long days and even longer nights with our heads down, missing the chance to take a breath and look around. Take a moment to think about those who have helped you achieve this milestone today. You have your parents who have instilled values that shape who you are. Your teachers who inspired you to be the best version of yourself and achieve excellence in the classroom every single day. Your friends who have been by your side through the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. But for everyone else in the audience who you didn't really cross paths with, those who did not immediately come to mind, were they merely insignificant background characters in the multifaceted and complex stories we call our lives? Absolutely not. We need to stop thinking of ourselves as the sole protagonists of our stories. Every person you encounter, every random passerby, every miscellaneous stranger you fortuitously meet on the street lives a life as intricate and complex as your own. Every single one of us has detailed feelings, daunting fears, eager dreams, rich histories, and wild experiences that we can all learn so much from. Now, here we are in a moment of reflection, the final celebration before we commence on the next chapter of our lives. A chance to look back on the four more years here and think about what we could have done differently. What if we paid more attention to those around us? delved into deep conversations with complete strangers about former adversities and astounding passions? In the fleeting moments of my high school career, I began expanding my horizons, whether intentionally or simply because my time freed up is for you all to judge. But in a weird series of circumstances, I was left sitting alone at lunch with someone I had never spoken to before. Nervous but curious, I decided to embrace the opportunity to hear a voice, a, long, a new voice, along with a new set of experiences and perspectives. Within a single conversation, I discovered a whole new side of the person that I had never known existed. We bonded over our love for travel and admiration for unique places in the world, and it was refreshing to find someone that I shared that appreciation with. I only wished that we could have met sooner. Growing up in a world more, pol more polarized than ever, I felt content in sticking within my own bubble of close friends and family. I never considered what was behind the scenes, that all the paths we decided not to take, all the destinations we didn't buy a ticket to, all the stories we narrowly avoided, all the dreams that stayed dormant in our heads, all the questions we wrongly assumed were unresolvable, all the things we had to give up to be here today. As we embark on a new phase of our lives, I'm going to try and cherish and appreciate the communities I become a part of along the way. And I hope you all will do the same. Maybe in Ithaca, you'll finally get the chance to watch a hockey game. Maybe in New Orleans, 
you get to experience the most extravagant Mardi Gras celebration you can ever imagine. Or maybe you'll meet someone who changes your life. When my grandmother approached that woman, she had no idea who she was or what impact she would have in her life. But for taking time to connect with a stranger, she is an inspiration to me and a model for us all. The truth is, our individual personal narratives are all entangled. We just haven't discovered how yet. Until you make an effort to reach out, every stranger will remain an irrelevant extra in our lives. We're all extras in each other's lives. It took me sitting on a train, watching the hundreds of nondescript towns and cities blow past my eyes to realize that and come to write this speech. So, to my fellow classmates of New York Academy's class of 2021, through the excitement of college life, to our unpredictable careers and beyond, I urge you to consider, who might enrich your daily conversations? Who will push you closer to attaining your highest aspirations? Who will be the stranger who changes your life? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Weiss and this is To the Future of Us. I say us as a collective because we have grown up together. When the class of 2018 graduated and I imagined our senior year, it didn't quite look like this. And yet, neither did we. A few inches shorter, a million moments to come, and if you asked me where the last four years went, I would say somewhere in a magical blur. Somewhere we made the most incredible friends in the world. Somewhere, 14 turned to 18 and we started driving cars, stopped asking ourselves who we would be and started becoming those people. Somewhere between freshmen filling up the water jug and stepping off the field for the last time, the last curtain call, art installation, mic check, dance recital, and to you, our parents and teachers who have loved and supported us through all of it, thank you. Thank you for giving us the space to grow together, for cheering us on at every peak and valley, for guiding hands and open hearts. In an unprecedented year and world, we have loved and laughed and cried and made it out the other side. So here is the future of us, physically separate, yes, but together, always. Here is to the adventures yet to come, the bittersweet turned open road, infinite lattice of what could be. High school is a stepping stone and a path unfurling before each and every one of us, marked forever by each other, and stretching forward into a beautiful unknown. Thank you. Good afternoon. In 1982, a young man accepted a position at Newark Academy as a library director. Over these last 39 years, he has served his community officially as the Director of Library Media Services, Summer Session Director, Department Chair, Administrator, Coach, Advisor, and most recently as part of the Return to School Task Force testing team, ensuring each member of our community had a little vial in which to spit, something I'm sure he never thought would be a duty during his final year at Newark Academy. Mr. Malalu has filled the school with his music, he is known as someone to be depended upon, a good friend, an avid hiker, a proud grandfather. Symbolically, Mr. Malalu is graduating today with you as he prepares for his retirement. He's saying some farewells, making plans to stay connected, and anticipating new opportunities. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Mr. Robert Malalu. Thank you, Tracy. <clears throat> and may I acknowledge and thank Newark Academy, Board of Trustees, the Alumni Board of Governors, the administration, faculty, staff, students, families, and friends, and 
most importantly, and now, the class of 2021. I'd like to invite you to step back in time to your grade nine public speaking class, <laughs> where you may recall your teachers telling you that if you were ever asked to speak publicly, and bigger if you were given the opportunity to choose your own topic, that a helpful way to proceed would be to draw a simple Venn diagram. Three circles intersecting. In circle one, list those things that you know. Circle two, list those things that you love. And in circle three, list those things which you believe can speak to the hearts and minds of your audience. Where the circles intersect, that's your sweet spot. That's your topic. And so, after 39 years of commuting from two miles west of the Delaware River in a land called Pennsylvania, <laughs> what is Mr. Malaloo's sweet spot for the class of 2021? Well, I'm glad you asked, because it's something that you are well acquainted with, something that you have persevered to maintain, and something through which you have much to offer. A single word with endless possibilities across your lifetime in the end, it came down to friendship. And for the next few minutes, I'd like to share with you what I've discovered and what I believe awaits you on a road called friendship. Let me begin by saying that friendship is something we practice right from the start at a very early age. And not in the sense of going to medical school or law school and then opening up a practice. No, we practice friendship with no preparation you step onto your own friendship road. You give it a try. You begin to get better, sometimes, and sometimes not. It actually starts before your earliest recollection. Ask your parents on the way home, they'll tell you. I was reminded of this early practice in friendship when I was re recently introduced to my one and a half year old grandson's next door neighbor, his friend, a four year old girl who was learning to tell time. In her driveway, she created a nature clock made up of small limbs, branches, flowers, and decorative stones. It was beautiful until my grandson decided he wanted the hour hand for a walking stick. Life on Friendship Road came to a screeching halt. <laughs> and as we lovingly explained that wasn't something we do, and certainly not with our friends, I thought, he's getting an optional progress report in the practice of friendship. Then I thought, well, maybe that's okay. Maybe friendship is the one practice that we do that doesn't have to make perfect. We make friends and we maintain friendship in our practice. You have all done a remarkable job practicing friendship in the most difficult circumstances. You have sought out and discovered ways to keep your friendships vibrant, meaningful, and memorable. Keep on with the practice of friendship you will discover people out there who need such friends. So then let me talk about some people. Having done well with each other, let me direct you to two groups of people that you are likely to encounter. In fact, I encourage you to look for them somewhere on your own friendship road. The first group is made up of old people. Think of it as two generations ahead of you. I've always been fond of old people, and that's why I've worked so hard to become one. <laughs> When I was exactly your age, I got a summer job at Borden's in Brooklyn. It was a chocolate factory. It's not what you're thinking. There I worked alongside an old person, two generations ahead of me. We became friends. Each day he would wait for me, and we'd eat lunch together out in the parking lot as the noon traffic on Atlantic Avenue rushed on by. We'd eat our sandwiches, drink our sodas, and then we'd light up our cigarettes. He, because he no longer had a choice. And me, because I had recently decided that I wanted cigarette smoking to define my life, to be a part of everything I did. And ultimately, as I aged, to roll the dice on my health. Well, of course, that's not what I decided. But one day, he looked at me and said very clearly, that's exactly what I was deciding. Then he said, you need to quit now while you can. And so I did. Today, 
51 years later on this great occasion, I'm talking with you. You who are two generations in the opposite direction from where I now stand. Be on the lookout for such a friend sooner rather than later. And someday, looking back, see what a difference it made in your life. Well, let me move you on in our journey on Friendship Road onto the Newark Academy campus. And I'm going to jump ahead to a time after college. So I'm going to ask you to put this in your back pocket and pull it out when you get there. I want to talk to you about another type of friend that you are likely to encounter. They are called colleagues, coworkers. They will be your work friends. And they are like members of your class, a team, a cast, an ensemble, a club. So you really already know what I'm talking about. New York Academy has a wealth of colleagues in this regard, and I hope you discover some along your way. They are likely to share a similar passion, a common vision, or a goal with different ideas and ways to achieve them. They will tend to complement you rather than reflect you. You can learn much from them, even if you are with them for a short period of time for a common or specific purpose or task. As was mentioned, this happened most recently to a group of us who were appointed by Mr. Austin back in the fall to come up with a saliva testing program for the school community. A group of colleagues, some well known to each other, some not, tasked for a common purpose, the protection of our community. And so, we studied saliva, how to collect it, how to record it, how to analyze it, how to report it, how to pack it and ship it off to Brooklyn, and how to deal with all of the unknowns along the way. A group of colleagues, a common purpose, a defined period. Yet the solidarity and the closeness we felt was extraordinary. And when the school community ran the table with the final three no positives to end our test pro testing program, if the flurry of texts that ensued was audible, and if you had your window open, you would have heard a collegial shout across the Garden State and spilling in to the Keystone State. Coming directly from what I know and what I love, I wish you all a wealth of colleagues when you get there. Well, let me move on, and maybe you're thinking, he's working that letter P pretty hard, and I know he's going to say something about pets, because I have a great dog at home, and I say, good for you. I love dogs. <laughs> but I'm going to take a spur less traveled and talk about places. Places can foster friendships, but moreover, places can be friends. Back in that public speaking class, one of the most popular topics that you spoke about was camp and the places you went during the summer. And not just the campers and the counselors and the relatives, but the place it was for you. You spoke of it as if it were a friend, the lake, the cabin, the dining hall. All right, maybe not the dining hall. I want to say to you that Newark Academy, the place, has been a friend to many, and I hope it has been to you as well. For me, 39 years and 36 summers adds up to 968,564 commutable miles, give or take. And when I turn safely onto the Newark Academy driveway and see the cupola at 5.30 in the morning, I have to tell you that cupola behind me is my friend. Now, I know I've risked a lot here because when you come to your class reunion and you take that turn onto the driveway and you see that cupola, you might say, gosh, Remember that tall, bald-headed guy who said the cupola was actually his friend? Well, here's what I say to you. I hope that makes you smile. And then go find your locker. Or that favorite classroom. Or the stage. The field. The court. The places that you grew from here to here. The places that you grew here and here. And then really smile. I trust that Newark Academy, the place, has been a good friend to you. Finally, without finality, let me say that friendship is perpetual. And here I am not talking about what social media affords us all to stay connected. 
I'm talking about a place where friendship remains, in a place that technology cannot touch, where time and distance have no bearing, where our friends, however gone, still remain, in our hearts and in our minds, perpetually. Now take one last step with me back to that ninth grade class before you head out the driveway for the last time. How do I end my speech, you asked. You end it with distinction and conviction. And remember, the last thing you say is what your audience tends to remember most. And so when I sought to take my own advice and wondered how I would end this speech, I got home one day and my wife said, you got your card from Blackie. And there it was before me. You all know Mr. Parlin. At the end of each school year, for the longest time, he sends cards out to faculty and staff. Some of his stunning photographs and thoughtful verses that point us all to summer, along with a personalized note. Allow me to read his words. Dear friends, when COVID barred me from NA last February, I felt New Jersey had little hold on me. Joan and I went to our Adirondack cabin. Recently, we gave up our New Jersey apartment and acquired an apartment in Saratoga Springs, New York. I am immersed in the history of the Battle of Saratoga and the 19th century architecture of the city. I miss my NA friends. In a swampy area near us, a flock of red-winged blackbirds is nesting. In my mind, I stand on the field by the track. The practice, the people, the place, and the perpetual nature of friendship, all in a few lines across a lifetime of discovery on a road called friendship. Class of 2021, we wish you all extraordinary lives filled with wonder, discovery, health, happiness, and fulfillment, and yes, good, good friends along that remarkable journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Malu, for your inspiring words. As our graduates head off to new adventures in college, your wisdom and perspective are much appreciated. Thank you also for your distinguished 39 years of service to Newark Academy. To all those assembled here, I proudly present the class of 2021. It's been my privilege to witness your progress through your time at the, at the Academy. Whether you're completing two years or the full seven-year lifer term, you've made your mark. Please allow me to briefly highlight for all those gathered here some of your remarkable accomplishments. You have all worked hard to develop the skills and habits of mind to become scholars. Forty-four of you completed the International Baccalaureate Diploma and explored an original topic in an extended essay. Consider some of the academic recognition and scholarships that you've earned. Within your class are five national merit finalists, eight semifinalists, 31 commended scholars, two national Hispanic recognition scholars, three national African American recognition scholars, one national indigenous recognition program scholar, and one Coca-Cola scholarship recipient. 21 of the members of the class of 2021 were elected to the Cum Laude Society, demonstrating academic excellence, scholarship, and generous commitment to advancing the pursuit of knowledge. I hope that all of you will become lifelong learners and retain your curiosity. The class of 2021 has made significant first forays into STEM fields. A sampling of internships completed by seniors include the Waxman Program at Rutgers for Original Biological Research, Computer Science at Princeton, and Drexel, astronomy at Columbia University, and biomedical engineering and stem cell research at Johns Hopkins. You are a class with tremendous passion for the arts. Many performances and competitions were unfortunately canceled during the pandemic year, but that did not stop you. 
Our singing group, Lumination, were semifinalists in the Mid-Atlantic Championship of High School a cappella, where two students in this class also received outstanding soloist awards. In the meantime, seniors presented their creative endeavors in art exhibits, dance concerts, jazz and orchestra concerts, Zoom theatrical performance, and last weekend's wonderful cabaret. We also have many accomplished athletes. Two members of the class of 2021 have signed national letters of intent to join NCAA Division I athletic teams. Four will join NCAA Division III teams as well. One senior member of the girls lacrosse team reached the 100 goal milestone. Yeah. <laughs> Our boys cross country team won <clears throat> the state championship led by two senior captains. Our boys swim team finished ranked in the top 20 in the state, led by a senior captain. Our boys golf team won the state championship as well as the non-public B tournament of champions, again led by a senior captain. And I just heard this morning that our track boys team won the state championship yesterday, so congratulations. And I also would be remiss if I didn't mention our tennis team. This undefeated team is the number one in the state and according to UTR rankin rankings has been identified at different times as first, second, or third in the nation. They, uh, they won both the non-public B title and the tournament of champions. So congratulations. So the class of 2021 has also done an incredible amount of service to the broader community. Um, they reported over 13,000 hours since their freshman year. And if you do a little back of the envelope calculation, that's about 130 hours per person on average, which means like each of you work for three weeks at some point, which is incredible. By the way, a lot more than recent classes. And, and it's not just about the hours, it's the sort of depth of commitment and, and what you've been able to do. Uh, some examples. This class has been responsible for the creation of the Month of Action and the Eco Summit, which have become staples in the NA experience. They've expanded our commitment and connection to organizations like the Friendship Circle. Two seniors started an oral history project to capture stories of people who identify as LGBTQ plus in New Jersey. We have in this group an Eagle Scout and a Girl Scout gold winner, both of whom focused on environmental stewardship for their projects. Yeah, please, applause generously and frequently. <laughs> Your work as leaders on the equity and inclusion team and many affiliated clubs has helped propel Newark Academy further towards our goal of becoming a community that truly welcomes, celebrates, and supports all students. During the pandemic, the class of 2021 stepped up to deliver food to seniors, use 3D printing to make PPE to donate to local hospitals, assist community members to get vaccination appointments, and volunteer at vaccination centers. Multiple students in this group serve as EMTs and continue to serve through the pandemic. This is a class whose generous spirit and action have made a difference in the lives of many people. Class of 2021, the colleges and universities that you have chosen are selective and prestigious. But more important, they are reflective of your particular talents and interests. They include large universities and smaller liberal arts colleges, from the great state of Maine to Wisconsin to Florida to California and the United Kingdom. Fifteen of you will attend liberal arts colleges, 10 are enrolling in engineering programs, 15 in undergraduate business programs, four in arts, and eight students in education programs. Two seniors have committed to serving their country after college by joining the ROTC. Congratulations to all of you and best of luck in college. The faculty and I wish you rewarding lives as thoughtful and compassionate citizens. We hope that we have instilled in you the will to strive for high standards, the spirit to share generously with others, and the moral compass to act with honesty and integrity. I will close with a charge that has been said at Newark Academy graduations since the 19th century with echoes of that century's commitment to educating for character. I now charge you, honored youths, 
to bear yourself with uprightness and integrity to the glory of God, to the honor of the state, and to the good name of this academy. Dr. DiBianca, Ms. Galvin, and Ms. Osterhagen will now award the diplomas. So we started a tradition last year where after we say the name of the diploma recipient, we share a few words written about them from one of my colleagues. Um, and just so you know, there's no pattern about who speaks for whom. <clears throat> it was actually quite difficult um, to sort out who was going to speak for whom because they each, I guess three or four or five uh, teachers wrote for each one of you. So it was a process of selecting such that what would be maximized was the number of would be the number of voices that you hear. Okay, so that's just a little heads up. Um, first row. Oliver Francis Adelson. <laughs> Wise but humble, funny but friendly, often late to class, but full of timely contributions, Oliver is a man of contradictions and wholly kind and capable, Mr. Reed. Ian Ogpo. <laughs> Ian, behind the quiet guy, thank you for showing me the real serious scholar inside of you. I can't wait to see all that you do in the world, Ms. Edwards. Tiffany, Audrey, Olivia, Agbo. <clears throat> Tiffany, you are a fiercely independent thinker. Your kind is in short supply. Thank you, and Godspeed, Mr. Cosgrove. <clears throat> Michaela Alpert. <clears throat> Michaela, your passion and love of learning will be hard to replace. From sports, advisor group, classes and clubs, you have always kept me on my toes by questioning the status quo, Mrs. Rosvani. <laughs> Tess Hannah Berkowitz. <laughs> Tess, you once told me that everything's interesting, and it's true. You delight in learning just about anything. I loved finding, I loved finding out about Jews in occupied China from your extended essay. Go forth and make new discoveries, Dr. Lankin. Kylie Jane Bill. Woo! Kylie, I'm glad for the chance to have taught you in IB and to hear your thoughtful words in PhiloPsych. You have so much to offer, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about where your future takes you. Dr. Thayer. Cordelia Piper Byrne. Cordelia, you've become such a consistent, positive presence in daily life at NA. It's hard to remember a time when you weren't here. Keep sharing that light with everyone you cross paths with. Ms. Duzak. <laughs> Molly Sarita Oriana Cantalon. I admire you most, not for your physics prowess, but for how you are a one person, you can do it club. We're all thankful that your cheerful, get it done attitude has been so contagious for all of your years here. Mr. Kessler. Darren Cow. Every team needs a member like you, Darren, a quiet, calm collaborator, as ready to contribute to others' projects as you are to act on feedback on your own. Mr. Alford. Benjamin Chada. I first heard Ben at a summer jazz camp when he was about 12, playing some high C's on his trumpet. I tried enticing him to come to NA from another private school by telling him about the music program and that we serve Froyo on Thursdays and Fridays. His response, at my school we have Froyo every day. 
I'm happy he chose music over Froyo. Mr. <laughs> Mr. T. <laughs> Pravin Venkatesh Chakavarthi. <laughs> Pravin, your exceptional command of oral and written Spanish, combined with your sense of wonder and your profound love for language and philosophy, made our class a feast for the intellect. Profe. <laughs> Daniel Chan. Daniel, you are humble and self-possessed. Despite speaking fluently in Mandarin, you'll, you still gave it all in class. I'm so honored to witness your growth into a goal-oriented young man, and I wish you a bright future. Mr. Chang. Oh <laughs> Henry Chandonnet. <laughs> Henry, I already miss your sense of humor and willingness to push hard for the issue you care about. Community Service Council will not be the same next year, and the hallways of NA will feel emptier without your vivacious presence. Ms. Fisher. <laughs> William Jeffrey Shavala. <laughs> Will, your breadth of film knowledge, native insight about human nature, willingness to throw down a connection for the benefit of the class, and your generous spirit are qualities that enlivened our class and will serve you well as you go into the world. Ms. Mahoney. Anya Bilkis Chima. Anya, you are a natural leader, a wickedly gifted vocalist, and an exceptional choral president. Thank you for your dedication to our choral program for seven years, Mr. Lal. Ryan Zeus Chung. Ryan, you are such a good sport in our Spanish class. I will keep showing your video poem, Mirrors, Mirrors, to all of my students next year. All the best, Ms. Ortega. Ms. Ortega. Elaine Choi. Elaine, teaching you twice was a joy. It's been a fabulous journey. I should have fought Mr. Rez in the parking lot for the honor of having you as a second CIA. Love, Miss Betsy. <laughs> Thomas Clancy. <laughs> Tom, remember the wisdom of Leonard Cohen. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Peace and joy to you, Dr. La. who in a former life was Miss Betsy. <laughs> Jack Henry Cleave. <laughs> Thank you for your humor and goodwill, Jack. You consistently demonstrated joy for others and you enhanced NA's community. Mr. Vinicor. <laughs> Kayla Isadora Cohen. <laughs> Recipe for Kayla Cohen abbreviated. One cup brilliance, a handful of generosity, two sprigs of confidence, and a pinch of goofy. <laughs> Quote me now, this recipe is going viral. Mr. Reed. <laughs> Benjamin Alzadon Cole. <laughs> ben is the kind of kid who will look you in the eye, champion the cause of those who need a voice, combine great ability with tons of elbow grease, and quietly but confidently bring energy and a willingness to lead. Ms. Speck. <laughs> Rian Singh Dunkar. <laughs> Rian, ask anyone from English class. We all get smarter by sharing your airspace. Please see me for a list of influential people in the world that I'd like you to stand next to for a while. Mr. Reed. Erica Edmond. <laughs> Given your intellect and your moral character, I'd be tempted to call you a future philosopher queen. But I'm pretty sure that when you emerge into the light, you'd be just as happy wandering around the outdoors as going back down into the cave. Dr. D. 
Alexander Harris Fishbone. Your even keeled rock steadiness as a student and a group member and athlete mark you as a leader by example and a compassionate moral compass to those around you. These qualities will serve you well in college and far beyond. Ms. Mahoney. <laughs> Lucas Ryan Fishbone. <laughs> Lucas, I know that Spanish was never your favorite, but you always jumped in when no one else took the risk. I always appreciated your good spirit and your dedication. Buena suerte. <laughs> Professor Purcell. Rashad Freeman. Rashad, you are forward-thinking, determined, introspective, and committed to advancing conversations around equity and inclusion. People listen to you because you speak with purpose, you're kind, and you brought both enjoyment and curiosity to NA. Ms. Beck. Jason Henry Garag. Jason, your hard work all year in calculus was an insight into the kind and dedicated person that you are, Dr. Ungaro. <laughs> Justin Garn. <laughs> your creativity is unmatched, but your authenticity is most striking. Thank you for creating spaces in which others can develop the bravery to be exactly who they are. Ms. Shapiro Cooper. Ayush Ghosh. Ayush, it was wonderful to work with you both in advisor group and in the calculus classroom. You are impressively well-rounded and have effortlessly balanced your academics with so many wonderful extracurricular endeavors. Our community has benefited from your time here. Ms. Ayers. Uh, Sam Goodell can't be here today, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna read his uh, note anyway. Dear Sam, a kind heart and a fierce, fiercely competitive spirit are not usually found in the same person, but then there's you. Thank you for always taking the time to speak, to listen, and to be present to others. I wish you all good things as you leave NA. Never quit, Ms. Greider. <laughs> Ruthie Gu. Woo! Your intelligent creativity ranges from inspired solutions for difficult math problems to crocheted anthropomorphic turnips. Don't ever stop being you, Dr. Jacobson. <laughs> Lexi Costello. Thank you for always being such an awesome member throughout your time on EIT. Your gracious role modeling has been commendable. Continually continue practicing allyship, Mr. G. Anant Kumar Gupta. Woo! Thank you for asking the questions others are afraid to ask. Did you notice how many leaned forward when you did? Mr. Alford. Tegan Alexandra Hales. You have demonstrated more impressive growth as a scholar than any student I've taught. Sharing a classroom with you at NA was a delight. Mr. Coe. William Anthony Hales. Billy, keeping the hardest worker in the room, it will pay off. Coach Starr. Lori Hashashian. Lori, you were instrumental in packing immigration, exile, and identity, offering multiple connections to literary works and your own thoughts on what it means to belong to a language or to a place. Schnorogalem. Lori. Profe.
Roshan Idnani. <clears throat> From your undefeated middle school tennis career to your brief stint as a varsity coach in three western states, to your patient participation in esoteric philosophical discussions, I have enjoyed coming along for the ride. Dr. D. <clears throat> Tehran Idnani. From the moment you entered NA, your intellectual curiosity has been a hallmark of your experience. Your genuine interest in learning has made our community better. Mr. Ashburn. <laughs> Annika Inapuri. Woo! Annika, as a high school student, you somehow always manage to see the philosophical issues that are typically uncovered by graduate students. I'm in awe. Congratulations, Annika. You are going to set the world on fire. Mr. Hawk. <laughs> Kira January. Woo! Yeah, go Kira! One of the most kind, earnest, and thoughtful students to grace our choral program. Thank you, Kira, for your dedication to our choirs. Mr. Lal. <laughs> Jeffrey Hudson Keys. Jeffrey, your commitment to deep intellectual understanding in your social justice work, your generosity, your perseverance, and your warmth are all so appreciated. Thank you for all you have given to our community. Ms. Galvin. Elizabeth Hope Kogan. Lizzie, you're always smiling and showing positive energy in neuroscience. Excited for everything you will do in the future. Mrs. Patel. Elon Joseph Liggs. Elon, you led by example in every jazz band you were in. Your focus, dedication, and ability to juggle your many commitments stood out to your fellow bandmates. Mr. T. Molly Reagan Lindstrom. Molly, you have graced the NA stage, gym, and even computer screens with pre-recorded dances in your four incredible years in the dance program. You're a quiet leader of your class with impeccable work, et work ethic, beautiful technique, humble and helpful presence, outstanding creativity as a choreographer, and an amazing patience and skill as a teacher. Thank you, Miss Lux. Spencer Stephen Lowe. It's been a pleasure to have you, have been your advisor and your econ teacher, Spencer. Your determination, good humor, and enthusiasm make you stand out in the classroom. Take care and enjoy the next step in your life's journey, Mr. Stilliard. <laughs> Jeremy Luo. Jeremy, however hectic my mornings were, all through the year, I knew I'd have your calming presence on my Zoom screen and advisor each morning. It was so wonderful to hear from every one of your teachers throughout the year how engaged and committed you were, even while remote. True resilience, Mr. Beckman. Aiden Mack. Aiden, your constant work ethic, spirit of collaboration, and sense of humor make you a pleasure to teach and a very effective peer leader. Enjoy your next adventure. Ms. Spooner. <laughs> Olivia Madraperla. Continue to teach others what it means to be a loyal friend and a true ally. Don't ever lose your open-mindedness and your free-loving spirit. You will forever be my Lucy. It's a Lucy Ball reference. Ms. Edwards. Michael Marcus. Deeply competent and utterly self-effacing, Mikey has spent the last four years quietly getting stuff done. And he has done it with style. His obsessional notes are rivaled only by his philosophy TOK TikTok videos. Mikey, you are my spirit animal, Mr. Hawk. <laughs> Lauren Krista Martindale. Woo! Yeah, go Lauren! Lauren, your ability to raise the bar in class and on assignments is brilliant. To do it with an ease, grace, and kindness that keeps everyone in the conversation is what makes you so exceptional. Madam Leisinger. The other senior not here is Jules Max, but I'd like to read a, a word about Jules. 
Jules, your passion and open-mindedness were key to elevating our IB Spanish class. With students like you, teaching complex, teaching complex topics seems like a breeze. Ms. Ortega. Jordan, Maya, McRae, Robinson. Jordan, I've learned so much from you these past years. Never stop and never compromise your fierceness, Mr. G. James McCullough. James, your growth and contributions over the past seven years in athletics and academics have been excellent. I know your kind energy and positive approach to life will lead you to making great contributions to our world. Mr. Ashburn. <clears throat> Layla Malali. Yeah. Layla, I always admired your generosity, humility, and kindness. Please keep these unique qualities as you move forward to the next chapter of your life because they will always serve you. Dr. Fall. Christopher Mulligan. Chris, you think and respond to the world around you with passion, insight, and heartfelt sensitivity. You don't accept the status quo if it doesn't align with your most deeply held values. Go out and change the world for the better for all of us. Let your slow, easy smile shine in all you do, and success, however you define it, will come your way. Ms. Spooner. Nikita Narayanan. I've always enjoyed, admired how you can always stay positive no matter the circumstance. Keep laughing and know that it'll always work out in the end. You've accomplished so much in these past seven years and I can't wait to see what you do with the next chapter of your life. Mr. Rez. Gemma Nazarali. Gemma, I'm so proud of the young woman you've grown into and honored that I've been part of your NA journey. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to the field hockey and the cross programs. You will be missed, Coach Shai. Kavya Navarthi. Kavya, it's been such a pleasure to teach you twice and watch you grow as a highly engaged, deeply thoughtful person. Wherever you go, keep asking questions. TOK is everywhere. Dr. Lankin. Sorry, getting a little soggy up here. <laughs> Ray Alnix. <laughs> Ray Al. It has been a pleasure to watch you grow and mature into the young man you've become. Continue to share your kindness, creativity, and unique perspective with the rest of the world. Ms. Edwards. <laughs> Bolu Oshintolu. Dearest Bolu, how you've grown, and yet you've retained your curiosity, your enthusiasm, and your charm. Never forget our pre-state championship meet conversation. It's yours. Go get it. Ms. Grider. Claire O. I feel so fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with you in Calc. You brightened our classroom on a daily basis, and I will forever be envious of your perfect Handwriting, Mrs. Taylor. <laughs> Samantha Rose Pirelli. I would describe Samantha as the intellectual's intellectual. She is, in its pure sense, a critic. She holds all ideas to account. Our world needs more people of Sam's uncompromising moral strength. She witnessed what is right and what is good in the world. Mr. Hawk. Rocky Parikh. Your positive attitude and willingness to play any role to help the team is incomparable. Thank you for four years of basketball, and best of luck always, Coach Bona. Nicole Louisa Pesquin. 
I taught you for two years in Spanish, and I also had the opportunity to hear you in English, as we are both members of the equity inclusion team. You are an outstanding human, outstanding student in any language. Profe. <laughs> Julia Pinelli. Your positive attitudes, ability to light up the room with your smile, and subtle sense of humor made even the toughest times on the Community Service Council better. We miss you already, Ms. Fisher. <laughs> Karina Pinto. <laughs> Karina, you are a leader. You are also smart and strong. You are strong-willed and have an open and sophisticated worldview, which I so admire. I also appreciate how much you care and will speak your mind in support of others. Ms. Winiarski. <laughs> Kiara Quigley. <laughs> Kiara, you are a calming presence and a silent leader. Here's to a bright future for you, Mrs. Battelle. <laughs> Anjali Raj Kumar. Your dedication to the study and process of science has been a joy to watch this year. And your IA was a testament to your perseverance and flexibility. You are brilliant, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. Mrs. Salenti. <laughs> Jacqueline Jolie Rodriguez. <laughs> Even though you almost got me accidentally run over on a, by a bus in Lille, you're still one of my favorite people. Brilliant, empathic, and your joie de vivre is absolutely contagious. I can't wait to see where life takes you. Ms. Duzak. Mia Rubman. <laughs> Mia, you have the voice of an angel. Keep singing well beyond your time at NA. The world needs to hear your gift. Mr. Lal. John Martin Ryan. While your sense of humor certainly is a key aspect of your legacy. Your compassionate leadership of your peers will live on long after your graduation. Mr. McCall. <laughs> Parth Sarkar. <laughs> Parth, I'm really glad I had the chance to teach you last year in IB. Your interests are broad and your attitude unfailingly positive. You have a lot to look forward to and I can't wait to hear what life brings you next. Dr. Thayer. Ashley Scheichert. <laughs> Ashley is the embodiment of wit. That is to say, Ashley has a deep appreciation for life, the most marvelous ability to celebrate it, while also acknowledging that there are real contradictions that underpin our human project. If you need to face something hard, Ashley is your rock. She will help you face anything down and make you laugh while doing it. Mr. Hawk. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace Schwartz. Lizzie, I'm so lucky to have had the opportunity to work so closely with you in your senior year, both in Calc and on the yearbook staff. Your hard work and dedication will take you far in life. Wishing you the best, Mrs. Taylor. <laughs> Julia Catherine Brennan Schwade. <laughs> Julia, you're just amazing, and I'm so happy to have had you as a student and editor-in-chief of the Minuteman. Your talents, intelligence, and kindness will leave a mark on our school. Ms. Ortega. Chris Sethi. Chris, outstripping your brilliance as a student of economics was the kind, gentle, and accepting nature that you brought to my class every day. I am in your debt. Mr. Cosgrove. Joya Simmons.
Joya, I know you're off to do great things since your passion for life and ability to move through struggle have been evident since APUS. I will miss your bright smile and our lengthy discussions about life. Ms. Fisher. Thomas Skorka. Thomas, your enthusiasm for learning, great sense of humor, and positive attitude will take you very far in life. Dr. Ongaro. Kennedy Alexa Smith. Kennedy, congratulations on becoming such a smart, strong, confident young woman. Best wishes as you open up the next chapter of your wonderful story, Ms. Greider. Alexandra Giovannina Speck. Perhaps a 23andMe test might reveal that we really do have a familial connection. That would make me happy and quite proud. For now, I am grateful that during your time at NA, I was able to call you one of my own, Ms. Speck. Leela Sridhar. Leela, your ever-present smirk and your warm spark for conversation and learning were a treat from day one. Animal Rights Club will have a long legacy because of the work you put into its resurrection. Mr. Coe. Carl Steffens. A lefty pitcher with nerves of steel. You're also one of the most thoughtful and curious students I know. Your quiet impact was significant across our classrooms, athletic fields, and music venues. Ms. Winiarski. Abdul Sabur Sayed. While you may not crave the spotlight and seek attention, Abdul, you are precisely the person who deserves it the most. Utterly reliable and unfailingly good, you are the person others will want most on their team, Mr. Hawk. Amy Jingjang C. Woo! Amy, anyone who knows, anyone who can so beautifully weave together field hockey and Pythagoras is all right with me. Oh, God. Mr. Downs. <laughs> Emily Eating Tang. Woo! Emily, if your favorite author, Tolkien, were to write you into one of his stories, the world would have a favorite new character. You're as wise as an elf and as kind as a hobbit and we're all better for it. Mr. Reed. <laughs> Carolyn Tarno. Your curiosity about the world, your true to who you are groundedness, and your key eye, your keen eye, as expressed in your writing, are marvels and are sure to guide you as you fly away from high school into a brilliant future. Ms. Mahoney. <laughs> Benjamin Tolpa. Your appreciation and love of the natural world added so much to our class this year, Ben. Mm -hmm. From your passion to apiculture, to your knowledge and appreciation for the plant kingdom, you taught us all to be better stewards of our planet. Mrs. Salenti. Kristen Say. Kristen, such a natural leader and teacher. You made the string section your own this year. Thanks for helping the younger ones tune their instruments in the concert. Dr. Higgin. Michael Benjamin Usatine. You not only lit up our meetings with your smile, but also taught us how to cook with passion and coolness. We will miss you, Michael. Profe Pascal. Thomas Wachtel. 
Tommy, you are not a talker, you are a thinker. You don't talk the talk, you walk the walk. I am grateful for walking along with you for four years in Mandarin. Mr. Chang. Michaela Viviana Wong. Your leadership made a difference in our community. Your audacity in leading groups of different backgrounds and the depth of your understanding of cultures makes you a unique leader. Keep your passion and confidence. You will reach the stars. Recuerda mi casa club es tu casa. Profe Pascal. Caitlin Elizabeth Weiss. What a privilege to have worked with a person who is so accomplished on so many fronts. Scholar, athlete, activist, community servant, and creative writer. Always willing to contribute for the betterment of all. Mr. Roland Hagen. Eric Wang. If you find that fewer people are getting your name wrong, then get this one right, Eric Wang. He's the brains, humor, and stamina behind My Name Pronunciation Pal, the work of two years, not one. Thank you, Eric. Mr. Alford. <clears throat> Chloe Ellen Whitley. <laughs> Chloe wins the award for stealthiest risk taker of 2021. Present in every discussion, contributing in every class, and engaged in all sorts of ways outside the classroom. Chloe was the backbone of, backbone of many a discussion. Thank you, Chloe, you enriched us all. Mr. Hawk. <laughs> Madeline Wolf. Woo, yeah, Maddie! Maddie, to see you become the dancer, choreographer, and teacher you grew to be by senior year was a true gift. Thank you for always being yourself, staying true to your artistic passions, and not giving up even when challenges arose. I am so honored to have been your dance teacher, Miss Lux. <laughs> Michelle Wong. What a treat to have Michelle's creativity and sensibility in the English classroom, helping others to see the true art in literature. Such a generous and insightful classmate, Mr. Roland Hagen. Theodore Rawson Wright. Theo equals he who leads with action. Thank you for all you have done for the lacrosse team. Coach Starr. <laughs> Ivy Yang Shay. Ivy, you are the master of the database IA and a quiet, brilliant scientist. Keep making those connections and don't ever satisfy that curiosity. Remember us when the rest of the world knows your name. Mrs. Lenti. <laughs> Caleb Youngren. Caleb, thank you for the hope and confidence you shared with all of us at NA. We are proud of your growth. Be good, Mr. Ashburn. <laughs> Andrew Zabello. I will always remember when you made that, that three-dimensional graph to disprove a hypothesis about gravitational equilibrium points in the neighborhood of eight masses arranged on the corner of a cube. And it will probably always mess up my brain when I do. Mr. Kessler. <laughs> Monica Zang. <laughs> to me, you embody exactly what a true student should be. Daring, creative, humble, and hardworking. And you found remarkable success while retaining a calm smile on your face, a sense of purpose, and a refreshing sense of modesty. Ms. Winiarski. <laughs> Chinhui Zhou. <laughs> Sylvie, thank you for your brilliant, thoughtful, mature, and kind leadership as a member of so many DEI spaces at NA. Thank you for lending your gifts intellectually and artistically to our work. Mr. G. Matteo Zubek. Matteo, you are a balm in trying times. Your ability to lift everyone up with your loving goofballery 
is a truly unique and generous gift that will make you beloved wherever you go. Ms. Mahoney. That's the class of 2021. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, this dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. This beautiful, deceptively simple children's song, sung by Louis Armstrong, speaks to us today of life's possibilities and of the optimism that is ever present and ever before us. We must never lose sight of these precious possibilities. We stand together as one community, truly tested by the fragility of our time. We have faced challenges this year. We have emerged stronger and more unified in our determination to see how wonderful this world truly is. And now we are confronted with the greatest paradox of the day. We seek each other out to celebrate the joys and the triumphs of our journeys as a community here at NA. And yet, in doing so, we know we are about to embark on our own individual journeys, one filled with both excitement and trepidation. Today's journey will launch us all anew to the, tra to the challenges ahead. The traveler's blessing is universal, and it reflects an ancient desire to be protected and guided on life's journeys. The traveler's blessing speaks to us personally and collectively, and engenders hope that we will indeed face the wonders of this world with courage and awe. The Buddhists call it Tashi Delek, Mahai Mangala Sutta. Hindus pose in the Anjali Mudra and recite Namaste. Christians impart this traveler's blessing with the hope that we may find peace and grace. Muslims impart Salam Alaikum, peace to you. And Jews invoke the traveler's blessing as well. We call it Tefillat Haderich, the traveler's blessing. May we be blessed as we go on our way. May we be guided in peace. May we be blessed with health and joy. May this be our blessing. Amen. May we be sheltered by the wings of peace. May we be kept in safety and in love. May grace and compassion 
find their way to every soul. May this be our blessing. Amen. And together, let us say, Amen. Seniors, please stand. Congratulations, Newark Academy, class of 2021. You may now move your tassel and throw your cap. <laughs> 